What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we'll be comparing these three ultra portable devices. We've got the Surface Pro 6 here. This is the i7 model with 16 gigs of memory and 256 gigs of storage. It's the most powerful option. Comes in at a price of $1699 plus $150 for the keyboard plus another hundred something dollars if you want to get the pen. We're just going to say this costs $1849 for the sake of this video. And then we have the iPad Pro 2018 12.9 inch. This has the new A12X Bionic chip. It is ridiculously powerful and is certainly more powerful than the Surface Pro 6, at least on paper. Now, if you get the 512 gig version of the iPad, it costs $1349. And if you want the keyboard upgrade as well, it's an additional $200. But good luck getting that keyboard. It's been sold out. If you order it right now, it would be delivered in like a month. And then we have the Razer Blade 15. This is a full on ultra portable gaming laptop. It has an i7 8750H 6 core 12 thread processor. That's going to be great for multitasking as well as gaming. And of course, it has an NVIDIA graphics card, a 1060 Max Q, which is also quite good for gaming and is able to play almost all games out there on Ultra at 1080p above 60 frames per second. So we're going to be going over all the pros and cons of each of these devices, talking about the battery life, the performance, the functionality, the usability, and why you would actually pick one of these three devices over the other two. Without further ado, let's get into this review. It's going to be freaking epic. Let's get started. Now the iPad Pro comes with a 12.9 inch display and weighs 1.4 pounds, but how much does the keyboard case weigh? We actually don't know because Apple doesn't list the specs on their website and I haven't been able to get my hands on one because they're incredibly rare and sold out everywhere. But I'm just gonna throw it out there and guess that it weighs an additional 1.2 pounds, which brings up the total weight of the iPad to 2.6 pounds. Now the Surface Pro 6 has a 12.3 inch display, weighs 1.7 pounds, but but when you add in the weight of the keyboard, it goes up to 2.4 total pounds. And then we have the Razer Blade 15, which weighs 4.48 pounds and is 0.78 inches thick. So it is a very thin laptop. And if you get the more expensive, thinner version that has the vapor chamber cooling, it is only 0.66 inches thick, which is ridiculously thin for a laptop. The Razer Blade 15 is clearly the largest device, but let's face it, all three of these devices are large enough that you're gonna have to carry it in your hands or put it in a bag. You're not gonna be putting either of these three devices in your pocket. And to be honest, I don't think I would notice much of a difference between a 2.4 pound device and a 4.5 pound device. It would be hard for me to even tell in my backpack. I'm a big guy and I'm not afraid to carry around a seven pound laptop as my main laptop. Heck, I've carried 13 pound laptops as my main laptop laptop. This is all super lightweight to me. Now this dual storage Razer Blade 15 comes with 128 gigs of SSD and one terabyte of regular hard drive space. So you're getting more than twice the total amount of storage, though both of these are full SSDs for the 512 gig storage. More higher speed on these two. You do have the high speed SSD for the vast majority of your apps, but you're gonna have to store your photos and videos on the large hard drive on this guy that's a little bit slower. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start the 4K to 4K render speed. We're using iMovie for the iPad because it doesn't have a full version of Premiere yet and we're using Premiere Pro on the Razer Blade 15 and the Surface because that's what I would actually use to edit. Let's go ahead and get this started in three, two, one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. The Surface Pro 6 took 12 minutes and 52 seconds to finish the 4K render. The iPad Pro took six minutes and 22 seconds, which is ridiculously fast. I have done this same render on an eight core desktop CPU and it took only six minutes and three seconds. The Razer Blade 15 was much quicker than the Surface Pro 6 coming in at 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Now I've also done the same test over on the Aorus X7 and that came in right around eight and a half minutes. So you can see that there's a lot of variability here. The iPad Pro did especially well considering how thin it is in this 4K render time. So I mean, if you're trying to render 
quick videos on the go when you're doing simple edits, the iPad Pro might actually be a lot quicker than the Surface Pro 6 or the Razer Blade 15. This is not a direct apples to apples comparison because we're not using Adobe Premiere on the iPad Pro, so, and iMovie, quite frankly, must be more optimized for quick render times. Not to discount the excellent performance on the iPad, but it's definitely not a perfect comparison, but it gives you a good real world expectation if you're gonna be using these programs to edit videos. Next up is our Geekbench CPU benchmark. The Surface Pro 6 comes in at 13,500 500 for the multi-score. The iPad Pro managed 18,000 and the Razer Blade 15 managed 22,300. You've got really big gaps between each of these and this is a synthetic benchmark. It's not perfect either. So you just gotta take this with a grain of salt. This is the theoretical maximum possible performance of these machines when under load. But like I said, as we just saw in the Adobe Premiere render time versus iMovie render time, real world performance does vary a lot. And then we also did the Geekbench Compute GPU benchmark and the Surface Pro 6 managed a 35,000, the iPad Pro managed 42,600, and the Razer Blade 15 managed 120,625, which is obviously probably pretty realistic because it's got a much bigger throughput much higher uh, power wattage capabilities. Not to say you can't have good graphics on some of the games on the iPad or on the Surface Pro 6, but the, the raw power, it makes sense. The Razer Blade 15 should be a lot more powerful. The surprising thing here for me is that the Surface Pro 6 is so close to the iPad Pro because I would have thought that there would have been a bigger gap here. Now I've had a chance to play Fortnite on all three of these devices and I gotta say it's overall a good experience on all three. I was actually surprised at how well the Surface Pro 6 played it at 720p scaled resolution on everything on low, we managed to get about 40 frames per second on average. The iPad Pro manages to average right around 60 FPS consistently, which is ridiculously impressive, especially for such a thin device. Realistic real world performance there. We're looking at the iPad having a slight advantage, though it's a decent experience on both devices. Last but not least, of course, the Razer Blade 15 absolutely crushes Fortnite, especially since we only have a 60 hertz display on this Razer Blade 15. As long as we're hitting more than 60 frames per second, it's all fantastic. Now, one of the major differences between this iPad and these two Windows 10 laptops is obviously that you have iOS 12 on this guy and full Windows 10 on this guy. And there's a lot to unpack here, so try to stay with me. Now, Microsoft loves pointing out that the iPad is not a full operating system, but what does a full operating system even mean realistically? Like, what task do you need to do that you can't do on the iPad Pro? For the vast majority of users, there probably isn't much that you can't do on an iPad Pro. You can attach a keyboard and answer emails. You have full Microsoft Office. You have a very fleshed out web browser that's capable of browsing basically all the sites that used to be, you know, years ago, you'd only be able to see some websites on mobile devices. And now basically 99.9% .9 of websites are compatible. You can watch Netflix, you can print documents, you can edit videos, you can take videos with the remarkably good camera on the back. It's surprisingly good actually. And out of the three, the iPad does have the best front facing camera as well for FaceTiming or Skyping others. So if the iPad can do all of those things, what is it actually lacking? Well, first of all, I will say you're gonna have a lot tougher time adding peripherals to an iPad. For example, if you wanna have an external mouse, connect an external hard drive. Like if you wanna add an external hard drive, you can just plug it in with the USB port on the Surface Pro 6. But beyond that, the main area where the iPad is lacking is in business use. Use. Now, for the vast majority of small business owners, the iPad Pro will probably work just fine, get everything done that you need to get done. But for those of you that work in a large corporate business environment, it will almost for sure not get the job done unless that large corporate business has decided to integrate the iPad into their software suite, if you will, making it fully compatible. But very, very few companies have done this to date. So if you're needing a computer that you're gonna take in as a consultant at a business, you're almost for sure gonna wanna pick one of these two. But if you're your own boss, you run your own small business, or you work for another small business owner, you can probably make an iPad Pro work just fine in that small business setting. Now there are some strengths with the iPad as well. 
The iPad is built for a touch interface from the ground up. Everything from the settings menu to changing the brightness to switching between the apps, it's all touch centric, touch gestures. The buttons are large, they're easy to press and everything is very responsive and fluid because of the 120 frames per second display and rendering that goes on with the device. And because the iPad is a touch only device, all the apps are built for touch from the ground up. And that brings us to both the Surface Pro greatest strength and greatest weakness. The Surface Pro 6 is compatible with all of the Windows applications in the past and almost none of these applications were built for touch from the ground up. I mean heck, even Windows 10 was built for touch from the ground up, but even changing the brightness or the performance mode or turning your Wi-Fi on and off, it's just easier to accomplish and quicker to accomplish and more intuitive to accomplish on something like the iPad Pro. So what that essentially means is that the Surface Pro 6 is the Swiss army knife of tablets, it can run all of those Windows apps, but you'll probably want to have a mouse and keyboard to be able to use them efficiently. And of course the great strength in this is that if the Surface Pro 6 is the only device that you have, you're able to use it for all of those Windows apps that you absolutely need, and then you're also able to flip it into touch mode, flip the keyboard back, sit down and watch some Netflix when you're going to bed. So that's enough about software, let's talk about games and entertainment. As you guys know, I'm a huge gamer and and all three of these devices have their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to games. The great thing about the Surface Pro 6 is that there is a whole catalog of old PC games that this thing is perfectly capable of running at 60 frames per second. Think about GTA San Andreas or Age of Empires, Civilization, Starcraft 2. There are literally thousands and thousands of games that this thing can play extremely well. That said, you're never going to be able to play a game like Far Cry 5 without utilizing a tool like GeForce Now. What GeForce Now does is it pairs your device up with a render server over at Nvidia's server farm and it will render the game on that server and deliver it, stream it live to your Surface so that you can play it at high quality settings. And that is going to be the only way that you're going to be able to play those modern and recent titles. And the main downside to that is that you're going to have a slight delay. So what that means is that competitive shooters like Fortnite or PUBG G are just not going to be as responsive as they would if you were running it locally like you would on the Razer Blade 15. But utilizing a service like GeForce Now will still provide a fantastic overall gaming experience in the vast majority of adventure and strategy type games. And now it brings us to the iPad Pro. We already know the iPad Pro is more powerful than the Surface Pro 6 when it comes to raw processing power as well as graphics processing power. The main downside for the iPad Pro is that the vast majority of apps are going to be purely touch based. Yes, there are some that you can use a controller with. You're actually going to be able to have a really great gaming experience in games like Shadowgun or games like Fortnite, especially as app developers update their apps and add more compatibility. Apple claims that this thing is as powerful graphically as an Xbox One X and I actually do believe it. But the problem is the vast majority of games on iOS just aren't at the same level of quality as something like the Xbox. So if you're just needing a casual game to pass the time, all three of these devices will absolutely have you covered. If you want some more serious games, I would say the Surface Pro 6 is actually going to be a little bit better in that department. And if you want the absolute best gaming experience, the Razer Blade 15 is going to be the best overall gaming experience. And of course, that is to say when all three devices are plugged in. If you unplug the devices, then you're looking at severely reduced battery run times for both the Blade 15 and the Surface Pro 6. So if you're going to be gaming on the go like on an airplane trip, the iPad Pro is definitely hands down the best option. And that brings us to the battery life. How do these three devices stack up? This is honestly where it gets really, really interesting. Depending on what you're doing, you'll actually have radically different winners by a fairly large margin. If you're literally just sitting in a Microsoft Office document or lightly browsing the web, the Surface Pro 6 will absolutely crush with over 13 hours of battery life. The iPad Pro would get about 
10 hours of surfing time, and the Blade 15 will only get about six hours of surfing time. And of course, these run times will vary depending on your level of brightness, whether you have Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on, and whether you have anything else running in the background. In casual use, the Surface Pro 6 is the best, but the moment you run a game, the Surface Pro 6 actually has terrible battery life. The Intel i7 processor just isn't as optimized as the A12X in the iPad Pro, so you end up with severely reduced battery life in the area of three to four hours. The iPad Pro will still net you eight to 10 hours depending on the game, and the Blade 15 will only net you about 1.5 to two hours. So what it comes down to, especially when you're looking at battery life, is what are you gonna be using the device for consistently on a daily basis? If you're only gonna be needing a few hours of battery life, all three devices will work fine for you. If you're wanting to do more gaming and more heavy productivity type things, then the iPad Pro is literally the only option unless you wanna take the AC power brick with you for these two guys right here. When it comes down to battery life, the iPad Pro is gonna be the most consistent battery life on the go, especially if you need extreme mobility with the lightest weight possible. Possible. So when it comes down to it, the Surface Pro 6 is a personal computer that has a touch interface that works great in many instances, but will oftentimes suffer if it's not optimized well enough for touch. The Surface Pro 6, yes, can be great for entertainment, great for watching movies, great for watching TV shows. From a gaming perspective, it is actually passable if you're willing to do the workarounds and have slightly increased latency. And of course, it is the most versatile device providing both a touch interface, a very light, weight overall package and still being able to do full Windows apps. The way I think about the Surface Pro 6 is that it's like a 50% personal computer and a 50% entertainment device. It's good at both, but not great at either. And then we have the iPad Pro, which is like 80% entertainment, 20% personal computer. It is gonna be the best touch-based interface on the planet. It's gonna have the best speakers, the best overall consuming of entertainment media out there and it's going to have tons of great touch-based apps. But the main problem that I have with touch-based apps is that they lack the advanced functionality. For example, Adobe Premiere Pro, I need to edit sometimes 20 layers of video on top of each other for some of my videos and the iPad Pro just can't do that kind of video editing at this time. So depending on the users, it may work perfectly for you or it may completely fail from a productivity standpoint. Only you, the user, will be able to know if it was good enough of a video editor for you or if you need to step up to something like the Surface Pro 6 or the Razer Blade 15. Which brings me last but not least to the Blade 15. This thing does it all, but at the expense of mobility. It doesn't have quite as good a battery life as either of these devices, and it has a larger footprint. The iPad Pro is a fantastic overall entertainment device, and I will probably use an iPad in addition to my gaming laptop for when I want to have a more touch based kind of cozy in my face experience. But if I had to pick one of these three devices, I would hands down buy a full gaming laptop for that full PC gaming performance and the advanced programs that I need to be able to make these videos every day for you guys. So that's it for my comparison review between these three devices. It was actually incredibly hard. It was just a very tricky video to put together. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the notification bell if you guys wanna see more. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out.